Shalom Aleichem, Yiddish Kinder. A good evening. It's Matzer Esh Chedish. Oidle Yom Beis Oder. Hei Tavshin Pebeis. And I think today is the 30th Yatzat of Mrs. Lapine, her son of Remy Zelgazunzain, who the Rebbe spoke about, and he said that this is Kleine Kinderlach Yisoyimim. The ones like Benkin, not the mama, they're going to long for their mother, they're going to miss their mother. And who's going to raise them is now a shliach, and he's making a fundraiser to build a mikveh in the name of his mother, who was a real Kadesha, that I spoke about her. A real Kadesha. And the Rebbe spoke then, 30 years ago, the Indian, that when you have two others, it's Batl Bashishim. The simch of Adam, a vatl olin yonim loy toivim, and it should be body mazle and goof body, ben shama bria, ben goof body, ben chay ben itzchem beli hefsek, and you can go through the Indian. They'll offer a toshuv through the nafshek off of a kel tihiya. This is thirty years ago this month. Now thirty years later, he needs a melech hamashiach baba pel mamish. Amen. But even if a nigle for all of us, but tech simch, but tech bria, but tech atzlocha. This is a third shiir of Oisai on the Maimer of a year or so in Kei Yisrael of a Tachas Ragel of Kamaisa Livnes Asapir of Etzem HaShamayim Lateir Tavshin Yutes. We learned the whole Maimer except for the beginning and the end. We learned the whole Biur. And what did we learn? That there's Evan and Levena. Evan is Bidei Shamayim. It goes on Atzilas. It's a Lakus. It's Dveikus. It's Bidel Atzmi. And it's invulnerable. There's no way Klippa could affect it adversely. Levena is Bideyadam, it goes on Kalim Debya. By itself it's Yesh. And there's a possibility to use it in a negative way. Iru Migdal Vereshe Bashamayim of Klipa, Yeshus. And the, what you need to do, what you're supposed to do, is create the Iru Migdal de Gedusha. But the Rebbe explained that when you're creating the Iru Migdal de Gedusha, when you're making Levena, which is man made brick, and to the Hashem, basically the only thing that it could achieve is Bittal Ayesh. It cannot reach the Madrig of Bittal Atzmi. However, the Rebbe said several times in the Maimir, in a variety of different ways, that even though Levena, which is Bittayodam, which is Yesh, can only be brought to a state of Bittal Hayesh, there is also the idea that you go from the Bittal Hayesh to the Bittal Atzmi. You go from the Levena to the Evan. When you learn the Maimir, you're not sure what is the meaning of it. Is the meaning of it that you create a Levain and the Abish to give to the Evan? Or you could create a Levaina, which is only Bitla Yesh, and that it's possible that the Bitla Yesh should be to such an extent that the Levaina becomes like an Evan. It becomes a Bitla Atzmi. And when we learned the Maimer, we sort of leaned in this direction. And I brought the Rayas to it at certain points of the Maimer. Based on what we learned and how we learned it, I want to say that the Rebbe actually told us three things. Let's start again. Levena means man made brick. Man made brick means oisius, letters of davening and learning that are not from the heavens, they're not divine, they're human, and they're yesh, and they're separate, and they can be very easily made into klipa. And the three levels of correction. Of properly using Levena would be number one, Bitla Yesh. That when a person uses the Kalim that the Abish they gave him that are separate from Elokus in the service of Hashem, it's called Bitla Yesh. Number two, it's Pasol, U Migdal Vereshe Bashamayim, Migdal Eith Shem Avayim. That even though he's only working with Levena, with man made brick, he's, we're serving Hashem from his own perspective, but it's possible. That he should serve Hashem with his own koiches, with his own kalim, to such an extent that Havaya should rest, that Ein Sof should rest. And if and when Havaya rests, his Levena becomes an Evan. The stone which is man made acquires the status of a stone which is divine, that it achieves the Madreg of Bitalatsmi. And the third idea that the Rebbe mentioned was the idea of Mesiris Nefesh. That when the Possek speaks about Levena, he uses the Lush of Nisrefa Srefa, make a fire. And the Rebbe interpreted the Ina Mesiris Nefesh. And when we learned it, 
on page 62, I explained, I suggested, that this is even higher than heaven. Mesiris Nefesh is that you're taking the Levena, which is by itself a yesh. And because of the Mesiris Nefesh, not only is being bottled a bit of a yesh and being bottled a bit of me, it's burning up in a fire of a lakus, which is a madrig, which is even higher than bit of me. Now, understand that I don't know if this is true. I know it's not explicit in the Maimed. I know it's not explicit in the Maimed. I do believe it's implicit in the Maimed, but I will be very accepting if someone tells me that I'm, as they say in Yiddish, beating a kettle. The first idea that I said I, I really believe more strongly, even though I, this I can't prove absolutely, that when the Rebbe says that you're working with Levena and you're making an ear and then you're making a middle Eish Shem it means that the Levena is first in a state of bit layesh and then it's in a state of bit latzmi. This I'm almost certain is pshat in the Maimon. The second idea that there's even a Madrig which is even higher than Atzil is this I'm more precarious about. But it's important to hold on to this. It's important to hold on to these two ideas, which are really a chazorah, they were a review, what we learned in the first two shiodim, as we now learn the third shay, which is the beginning of the Maimon, the end of the Maimon, the and the Siyum. In the language that you have in the Quintus Limadach Siddis, the middle of the Maimon that we learned is the Biur, and the beginning and end that we're going to learn now is the Maimon. But in order to understand the Maimon correctly, you have to remember the Biur. So Levena, man-made brick, is Yesh, and basically all you can have is Bittal Yesh. But it's possible that you can bring it also to say the Bittal Atzmi, and perhaps even higher than that. Hold on to that idea as we now learn the Aschol and the Seam of the Maimed. So we're learning a Pasuk, and we're going to bring two interpretations of Chazal of this Pasuk. The Pasuk says, The Jewish people saw godliness. And the heavens opened up. And Yidin saw Lakus. And what did they see? Vitachas Raglov under the feet of Elokus was Kamaisa Livna Saper, like the action of Livna Saper means white sapphire. Livna can mean white. Alternatively, Livna Saper could mean brick of sapphire. Sapphire is a natural rock. Natural rock. Livna Saper means where the sapphire comes from man made rock. And as the clarity of the sky of the heavens is transparent they saw godliness and under his feet there was the likeness of livna sasapir sapphire of levena either white or brick and as the sky is transparent see-through now you should know that there's a minor of on this rambam on this pasuk and of course the rambam kedagia bakoidesh is trying to explain what this means in words of Higoyen. And of course, Vatachas Raglov means lower than the lowest Madrega of Elokus. And he explains Chesem HaShemayim Latoyar in a fascinating way. He says, when you look at something that has absolutely no color, you see yourself. So he explains that each person, when they look up at Elokus, they see godliness in their own image which is really all a person is capable of seeing using his own mind, his own intelligence, his own asoge. This is what the Rambam says practically. I have to say, I didn't look the Rambam up. I saw this Rambam 20 years ago. But what the Rambam says. All of us understand that Akel Moshe Lomlitz, it's all allegory. Hashem doesn't have bricks and Hashem doesn't have transparent skies. Hashem is Poshet Betachas Apshitos, ain't safe. So all of these words in this passage that denote that the Jewish people saw godliness and that the Hitztairus, the, the visualization, the gestalt that the godliness took on was they saw something, but it wasn't physical bricks and it wasn't a physical sky. It was a metaphysical vision that meant something. Like all Navua, that Navua has a gestalt, has an image, has a visual. And like the Rambam writes in Kama Makemis, including in the Shemayin and Prakim, that reason, that one of the most important requirements for Navua is a Chusha Dimyan, is the power of imagination, is because the Navua comes to you through a visual, through a Hitztairus, through the Chakika, through the engraving on your consciousness 
of a certain visualization. But when it's real Navua, that image is bringing to you ain't safe. It's bringing to you get lechkeit. And when you experience it, you don't just experience seeing an image, you experience how that image is a lakus. And the Navi then has to interpret what it means. I've discussed many places. And the same is true here. When you say, Vayirus al saw the Jewish people saw godliness. It doesn't mean you, you can't see God. They saw something which was a hakika, which was a uh, indication of the certainty of Hashem's Metzius. But Klaus says the Madrega of Navua, and of course you know there's a difference between the Rambam and the Ramban, between the Chaykim and the Kabbalah, but Klaus, how you understand Navua, but it was some kind of a visual of Navua. And the Hitztairos, the image, was Kemais, Livna Sasapir, Ruch Etzam HaShamayim Lotayat. And whatever Livna Sasapir means, and whatever Chetzma Shamayim Latay Har means, it's not a physical brick and it's not a physical sky. It's a metaphysical vision that's the Kishtal, that's a symbol of something more pneumistic. This is the Pasuk. For Yiru Salakay Yisrael, they saw the God of Israel, with Tachas Ragla underneath his feet, which the Rambam interprets, lower than the lowest Madrega Velakus, was Kamayi's Livna there was the likeness of Livna Sasapir, a white, a, a sapphire brick. And this sapphire brick, I, I think that Amma is going to translate Livinus Lush in white, not brick, but I'm not sure. And again, I didn't look it up. And as the sky is transparent, translucent, see through. So you see yourself. But we're not learning Rambam, we're learning the Maimir. says the Rebbe Hine Bepasak Zayesh Beit Pirushin, there's two interpretations of the Pasak. And in footnote 2, the Rebbe gives you the sources of this Maimir. Pirush Aleph, the first Pirush, is a Medrash and a Yerushalmi. What does it say in the Medrash and the Yerushalmi? The Mashakol, so the when the Apostle begins, Tachas Rag, love Kamais, and live as a that they saw beneath the Lukus, or as Rashi says, under the Kisya covered, Mais and live as a action, which looked like Levain, a brick of sapphire. So according to the Medrash and the Yerushalmi, Hareza Achel Nikolo, that's the image of godliness until they were redeemed. That Jaws Hay Tachas Rag of the Muslevena, that so long as Yidden were exiled. Because of the principle of Imei Nechi or because of the primistic idea that a lakus reflects the world. And when Yidin were in a state of Shibut, a lakus reflected that Shibut with the brick, because the Jewish people were working with bricks, to remember the suffering and the enslavement, with mortar and with brick. So again, in this Eifen, of the Medrash and the Yerushalmi, there's something temporary about the image. When Yidin were suffering, Alakus mirrored that suffering in the form of the brick. Abba Mishanigalu, once the Jewish people were redeemed, and we are at bricks normally placed. Sham so that's where bricks was placed. In other words, it was put where it belongs, which is not in the, the divine chariot. And instead of the brick, which was there during the Golos, Elokus became transparent, translucent. I think the word is translucent, but I'm not certain. It became something that has no image, and therefore whatever you are, you see in godliness. Pshas Hashibud, what you saw was a brick, because the Yidin were slaves. And after the Jewish people were redeemed, the Elokus no longer reflected suffering, Elokus reflected the purity of Elokus. And when he looked at the Elokus, he saw himself not as a slave, but as a reflection of Getlechkeit. I'm not sure exactly what that means, but there's obviously that difference. I know this means. The brick of sapphire was earlier, and the transparent, the translucent sky was after they were redeemed later. And Bezin Yon, let me show you the two things, two different times. In Golos, Elokus reflected the Tzadah of Yidin. And in Geula, the Elokus reflected the Geula of Yidin. So Kamais, the Livnas Asapir was before, and Chetzem HaShamayim Tei was later. So it's two different images. That's the opinion of the Medrash and the Yerushalm. However, the Pirish Abayz is Isa B'Takim Yenis. Takim Yenis the Nazil is before the Medrash. Takim Yenis the Nazil is before the Yerushalm. And there it says that it's the same thing. When the Jewish people were enslaved with mortar and brick, and then we know that the Jewish women 
would would stillborn their infants. Vinishta Matit, and it got mixed in with the mud, with the cement that was being used to build the towers in Bavel in Mitzrayim. Yorah Gavriel Gavriel descended Vasam and Alavain. They made from these stillborn infants a brick. Shamaim raised it up to the heavens of the heavens. to be a footstool under the supernal chair of glory in the front of the throne. And this brick, which was made from the infants that were nafel, was Kemada Evan Sap. It had the likeness of a rock, of a stone, of sapphire. But the word Evan means stone bide Shamayim. In the Postic it says Levain bide Yodam. Shu Evan taved that Evan Sapper, the stone of sapphire, is a, is a precious stone. Shadeim, Uletzam Ashmaim, that has a very similar appearance to the sky itself. Kishu, but also when the sky is clear. That the stone of sapphire, the the transparent sky. When Yenechad is one idea, they state in Yenisa Menazil. So according to Yenisa Menazil, it's not that in Mitzrayim when Yidden were enslaved, the heavens reflected their tzaddas through a brick, and when the Yidden were redeemed, the heavens stopped reflecting tzaddas and began to reflect what the heaven is. But it's exactly the same thing. That the Livna Sasapid is a heaven tave. And this Evan Tev has the appearance of Chetzem HaShemayim Lotev. As Rebbe is going to say on the bottom of the page that this is connected to Tcheles and to the Raki and to the Kisi HaKovet. So the Yerushalmi and the Medrash say these two expressions are at two different times. And the B'Yen Samadil says it's one expression. That the brick of Tzadis becomes the Chetzem HaShemayim Lotev. V'Tzadach Lahav and the Rebbe has several questions. Question one. What is the pnimius, the difference between the pshat of the Medish and the Zayar and the pshat of Yenis and Benazil? Number two, Gam Tzadoklav. And the second question is that Lapid Rosh Aleph, according to the Pedish of the Medish and the Zayar, and the Yerushalmi, Shatach Asraglov Kamais Liv in the Sap and Hoysach Leni Galud, that the brick of white sapphire was only present during the duration of the Golos. And as soon as the gold was over, that was replaced with the Chetzem Meshmaim Latea. The question becomes, Masha Kosov, when the Pesach says, after we left Mitzrayim, we saw the God of Israel. Says the Rebbe, of course, it happened after we left. And if it happened after we left, how was it possible for Yidin to see at that time, under the feet of Elikus, beneath Elikus, like the likeness of a brick, of stone, of white sapphire, Shahoisa Bishas Hashib and Mitzrayim, which was true only while they were in Egypt and not later. It's a good to Kashis. First Kashis, what's the difference between the Medish and the Yerushalmi and the Yenus Menazil? And second of all, according to the Medish and the Yerushalmi, the Jews could not have seen Kemais Aliv Nasasapit. It was gone. And it was replaced by Chaetzam Hashemayim Lateh. That's the second question. Gam Tzadach of the third question is Klaus Inyin, the Liv Nasasapu. It must extend what it means. A brick of sapphire. That was Tachas Tisiyaka. The Rebbe Tachas Chol Nidi Gemara says Tcheles Deim Eliyam. The color blue is similar to the sea. V'yam Deim Elakia. The sea is the same color as the sky. V'rekia Deim Ela Even Asapir. The sky is similar to the stone of sapphire. V'even Asapir Deim Elakis Yaakov. The stone of sapphire is reflective of the supernal throne, as the pasuk says. V'yiruz Alkei Yisrael. V'tachas raglov k'mayz elivnes asapir etzem ashmaim latayr. There's another pasuk k'mayr even the mus, the mar even sapir the muskis. The keys looks like even sapir. So, according to this gemara, livnes hasapir is not only reflection of yidden and galur or whatever it is. It's actually the appearance of the kisi akovid itself, because the kisi akovid is even sapir. So the Rebbe's question is. How do we understand what the Medrash and the Yerushalmi and the Yenis and Benazil say? That the Liv Nesasapit is a reflection of the condition of Yidin in Golos. The difference is that the Medrash and the Yerushalmi say it was only during the Golos and later it passed. According to Yenis and Benazil, it remained even after the Gula. How do we reconcile what the Medrash and the Yerushalmi and the Yenis and Benazil say that the Liv Nesasapit is a reflection of the Yiddish Tzoris? With the idea that the Kisi Yaakov did live in And the fourth question is, Mikomo Komnem Khan in this Pazak, it says, Livna Sasapit for the Evan Sapit. There's Evan Sapit, there's a stone of sapphire, which is Vestach. Trelos Dem Yam, Yam Dem Rakir, Rakir Dem Evan Sapit, Em Sapit, Em Kisi Yaakov, but here it says Levena. 
And we know Levena Lematam Yevan, man made brick, is lower than stone made from heaven could come as we're going to discuss later on in the Maimid. So the Shaila is why does our Pasa change from Evan Sapir to Livna Sasap? And although I didn't number it this way, we just have now we have four questions. Right? First question is what's the machlaikis between the Medish, the Rishami, and the Yerushalmi Azil? Second question is according to the Medish and the Yerushalmi, how did they see Livna Sasapir after they left Mitzrayim? It was gone and it was replaced by Chetzema Shemaim Late. The third question is, why do we associate Livna Sasapi with Yiddish Shetzaris? When Livna Sasapi is the Muskisi. And the fourth question is, why in the Pasuk that describes the Muskisi it says Evan Sapi, and in our Pasuk it says Livna Sasapi? Now, Rabbi Isai, let's stop right here. And the question is an answer. The fourth question is an answer not only to the fourth question, it's an answer to the third question, and perhaps it's even an answer to the second question and the first question. The fourth question is, if the Pasuk says, that Chela is Deime Le Yam, Yam Deime Le Kia, Le Kia Deime Le Evan Sapir, and Evan Sapir Deime Le Kisya Kovit. And the question is, why by us doesn't say Evan Sapir that lived this Sapir? It's a push to tell it. Evan Sapir is Taket Muskisi. Live Nesa Sapir is not the Muskisi. Because Livnes Asapir is the other. And Livnes Asapir only becomes the Muskisi through Avoida, you see. So in the Gemara and the Pasuk, and the Pasuk is in Yecheskel Kapitel Aleph, speak about the Kisi covered looking like Evan Sapir. That makes sense, because Evan Asapir's Bidei Shamaim goes on Kael Datsilas. Our Pasuk is saying that the Yidin didn't see Evan Sapir, so Livnes Asapir, which means they saw the Kisi covered And the Kisi covered is reflected in Evan Sapir. But not an Evan Sapi Bide Shamayim, Evan Sapi Bide Yadam. Now, the way you understand this, now, of course, we haven't yet learned the Terutzim, but I'm sort of setting it up. The way you understand it is that the Yidin created that Evan Sapi. There's an Evan Sapi which Hashem creates, and there's an Evan Sapi which man creates. And the process of man creating Evan Sapi, as I explained to you in the introduction of tonight's class, and it's a review of what we learned in the last two classes. Is that you go first a bit layesh, and then you go the levain itself achieves a bit latzme. That's attached livnas asapir. So the fourth question is, how come the pasuk says livnas asapir when the pasuk says evin sapir? And the answer is because it's the same madrega, but it's not the same process. Evin sapir b'dei shamayim livnas asapir is when you take a levain and you make it into sapir. So once you understand that, you understand many things. Yidden in Mitzrayim. They first achieved a bit yesh, then they aspired and they achieved a bit atzmi, both on their own. And this is called Livna Sasapir. So on the one hand it's called Levena because it's Bideyadam. On the other hand it's called Sapir because they achieved a bit atzmi. And that's why the next word, Yuchetzem HaShemayim Loteyar, are consistent with that. When a person does avoid on his own, and he farts off a bit yesh, and he graduates from bit yesh to bit atzmi, then in our mind it is called Ire Likeinu. And middle is shema vaye, so livna sasapir and uke etzem hashemayim loteir are the same thing. Yes, livna sasapir is before, but livna sasapir is not only what they saw yidden suffering; it's what they saw yidden working on. And because livna sasapir is what they saw yidden working on, the graduation of livna sasapir itself is the etzem hashemayim loteir. So both according to the Medrash and the Yerushalmi, as well as according to the Yenisim and Azil. The Livna Sasap and the Etzav Shmaim Lateir are an evolution from one another. Livna Sasap is the, the process of going from Bit Layesh and the Bit Layesh to Bit Latzmi, which other said Etzav Shmaim Lateir. So, what's going to be the Machlaikis? The Machlaikis is whether you can see the Livna Sasap in the Etzav Shmaim Lateir or not. I'm not even sure what the difference would be. But we didn't learn the Terutzim, we're just learning the Kashis. But since we learned the Maimon already, we can sort of almost flush out the Terutzim. That Levena means Bidei Adam, but that the Bidei Adam does not only achieve a bit layesh, it goes from Bidei Adam, from bit layesh to bit Atzmi, and that's Livna Sasapi Ruchet Hashemayim Lateir. In the Yenis and Benazil's approach, that you see in the bit Atzmi, the bit layesh, and in the Medish and the Yerushalmi's approach, that the bit layesh was before and the bit Atzmi is later, but one comes from the next. And therefore, when you're seeing the bit atzmi, you're seeing the bit layesh, which came before, but that's the livna sasapir, which was in Mitzrayim. Uch etzam hashmaim l'teir, after they left Mitzrayim, because what you're seeing after they left Mitzrayim is built on what they did in Mitzrayim, and they're still able to see the livna sasapir. 
So again, I got ahead of myself and I got carried away and maybe I'm making a mistake. But I basically told you the Terutzim in the Kashas. And the Rebbe continues, second line from the bottom of page 56. I'm calling it Dalit, but Lechid, it's Hey. Kam Tzadachov, and other questions, Mashakos, and Bidisham, it says, and Yudisham, and Bavo, because it was Evan Sabin. In Bavo, we had a stone of sapphire. Or Mitzayim, it says, Livna Sasapir, in Egypt, we had a brick of sapphire. Lam to teach you, Shek Shem Shah Evan, Kosher Mehalavain, just like man made, nat- natural rock is harder than man made rock. The slavery in Babylon is worse than the slavery in Egypt, and therefore it's represented by a stone, a man, a divine made stone rather than a man made stone. The reason is the slavery in Egypt was only physical. We were already born as a nation, we were already Jews, and we had a retailer, and therefore the goals of the goals, but it's like it says in the Chazal. So the later Goliaths are worse than Goliaths time, and it's represented by the fact that Evan is hotter than a Levena, which is weird. Because in this Maima, we've always taken the position that Evan is, is impervious to Klippa, right? Evan is Bidei Shamayim. And here we're saying that the Evan is something that represents a worse Goliaths. How do you align? The idea that Evan means a worse gauze than a Levena to the idea that Evan is Mamaila and Livnes Asapin is Mumat. And I'm not sure what the answer to this last question is. I'm not sure that Rebbe answers it. But the first four questions the Rebbe is going to answer. This last question that there is an Evan of Klippa, that the Evan of Klippa is harder than the Levena of Klippa, and therefore it represents a worse Golos, how do you reconcile that with the idea that Evan normally is associated with Kalim of Atzils, which is a bottle and a bitl Atzmi, and Levain is only bitl Ayesh at best. But now that we read the five questions, let's go to the end of the Maim, and let's read the Tudor inside. Page 63 at the bottom. It says the Rebbe Vezehu, and now that we learned the whole idea of Oasis, of one. And we divided Avonim into Avonim and Levate. And we further divided into Madema, Bandema, Madeban and Bandeban. And we learned that when it comes to Madeban and Bandeban, it could be Klippa, it could be Ir, Umigdal, for Avedizor. But it could also be Ir, Lekainu, Migdal, Eshem, Avayav, Gedusha. Which is that you first achieve a bit Layesh. And from the bit Layesh, you go to a bit Latzmi. With once we learned that whole mind, but we now explain the post or the when it says in the post like Wayid was Al Kay they saw the godliness of Elakus of the Abishta. Kabai's Livnas Asapin had the countenance of an action of Livnas Asapin, white or a brick of sapphire. Uh etza mashamayim lotein, and as the sky is transparent, translucent, the see through, that's what they saw themselves. Says the Rebbe according to the Medish and the Yerushalmi is the two things chronologically separated. And according to Yenis and Zeal, there are two things which are simultaneous, not chronologically separated. But what is the difference philosophically? And here there's no mark like this Medrash. Yiddish Shalmi and Yenis and Zeal, everybody agrees. The leave, that's a sapir, sapphire, brick, is an avoid of Bidah B'Tarach Muhammad, correct, and David's world through struggle. Vain, or Shubh B'Chinus Yesha, Dain, one is in a state of Yesha. Svetzorich Muhammad, you have to have war in order to transform a Levena, which could be made into Klippa, into Yeshus, in order to make it Bittal, and the Bittal that it's going to achieve is going to be called the Bittal Ayesh. Ain't a Bittal at, it's not a Bittal from itself, it's a Bittal which is superimposed. As opposed to the Chetza Mashamayim Lateya, which is represented by Bittal Atzmi, the Shema. So now that Rebbe says clearly, Livna Sasapid is a brick of sapphire, and Etza Mashamayim Lateya is Evan Sapid is a natural rock, is a divinely created rock of sapphire, which is Avadim Shebidei Shamayim. Like the Rebbe told us in the Maimed, that Kalim of Atzilus, where Avadim Shebidei Shamayim, Ein Ra Yedid Malmaila, there's no evil that could possibly be in Atzilus, because they're dveikas and they're bitlatzmi, Hanashala Maila Yesh Rak in Yenatara, in Atzilus, there's only purity, and the Shaykh Pchinus Yesh Klal. So, Maiz of Livnes Asapir means a stone of sapphire which man created. Uch Etzel Mashmaim Lotel means a stone of sapphire which was supernally created. We turn to page 64. Now we understand what the Medrash Shalmi say. That leaves us a sapir, the brick of sapphire, is not the same thing as the translucent, transparent sky. 
the idea of a brick of sapphire is davoid a bit of a shame ban which is during misbad a bishib with misayim b'chayim and obovenim shay days and it can get a flog a day only achieve bit of a yesh while in misayim ach le yesh who bit of a derech mocham obovad whereas in misayim they were working on their own so the best they could achieve is bit of a derech mocham and bit of a yesh and therefore in the bit of a atzmi as much bit of as they achieved in Egypt it's only a bit of in the state of yeshus it's not the bit of in the state of atzmi for the chayin in the mission eagle when they're later redeemed high said the bit that they achieved in Levena was placed where Sham was placed where it's supposed to go. Han Shalavena bricks, even in their state of Bitl underneath Kedusha, because they're only Bitl Ayesh. Ve'ena Kedusha Muslabesh's Ba Kedusha is not manifest there. It's only a state of Bitl Ayesh. But above the Livna Sasapid is another kind of beard. Ella, there's an alternative beard, a beard, and as the male, they take a air. A beard of Klippa, which happens, but not through struggle, but naturally through a, a hardness of light, which is the idea of Ketzam HaShamayim Lotear, which never calls Bidira Berach Shalem, like Shlema Melech, Hishmenucha, Saim Mithira Bashlamusa, that the Ritzutas came on their own. You see, but according to, the way you have to understand this is, that Levain is put in its place, and Etzam HaShamayim Lotear, which is Evan Sapir, is higher. But one is a combination of the other. I don't think the Medish and the Yerushalmi are disagreeing with the basic position of this whole Maimed that Levena is Yesh and the Aved of creating a Iru Mikdash the Kedusha is be calling Bittal Yesh and that the graduation the end of that Bittal Yesh is a Bittal Atzmi you're graduating from Levena Sapir to Evan Sapir which is also called the Etzam HaShemayim Lateyer and they're contiguous the Rebbe is saying that one is pushed aside another replaces it but the Varta being pushed aside means it's transcended Bittal Yesh is a lower level, but it's pushed aside and replaced by a bittel atzmi. But the bittel atzmi is built on top of the bittel ayesh. That's the chayyur pshat and the medish and the yerushalmi. Om lom pilash tagim yenis, but according to the pilash yenis, it's the same thing. Halavin or atzma nasas kesser hamatayer. The natural, the man-made brick, which is only bittel ayesh at best, achieves being transparent as the sky is. Which is like a bittel atzmi. V'hai nul fishi b'avedus a bittel ayesh. Ma kibuchin is bittel atzmi. The yenis of ben ezil says that even when you're on your own. And you're doing, and if I have a bit of layesh, the bit of me comes consequently. So what's the machlekes? I'm not sure what the machlekes is. You could say that the machlekes is that the medish and the Yerushalmi hold that from Livna Sasapi you can never have a bit of me, only a bit of layesh. And the Etzim HaShem comes from heaven. But I don't want to say that. <laughs> and maybe I'm creating unnecessary complications for myself. I want to say that both the medish and the Zayir and the Yenis and the hold that Levina is Yesh. And Libnas the Sapir is Bittal Ayesh, and Eretzim Hashmaim Lateir is the Bittal Atzmi, the Evan Sapir, which is above Libnas the Sapir, and that one brings to the next. But the Yenus and Azil holds there closer, and the Medish and the Yerushalmi holds that it's farther away. So again, you have an option of saying that the Medish and the Yerushalmi holds that you'll never go from Bittal Ayesh to Bittal Atzmi without a Gilim or Maila. And Yenus and Azil says you could go without a Gilim or Maila. But it's Gishmake to say that the argument is much more subtle. And once you establish that the argument is much more subtle, you have the real question. So what is really the difference? Now, how does it happen that Yesh and Bittal Yesh brings to a Bittal Atzmi? L'choyer a Bittal Atzmi has to be from the top down, a Bittal Yesh is from the bottom up. So he gives the example from Tshuva. Valderach, this is what the Shemaz Gemara says, being Tshuva Miyava. When a person does Tshuva Miyava, Rabbah, Zinus, Nasus, Gezach, Zaved, it's not only a pushed aside and destroyed completely, but they become mitzvahs, which means Shara Atzma Nebach Atev, the evil becomes good. Just like Levena Atzma and Asgas Matev, the brick becomes stone. So just like in Tshuva, it's not that the evil is removed, the evil is transformed to good. Here also, the bitl ayesh of Livnes Asapit is not only bitl ayesh, it's raised up the Madrego bitl asmi al darachin yinat shuva. And perhaps, this is the nafkamine, perhaps that shuva is higher than atzilis. So maybe shuva is like the Rebbe said on page 62 about Nisrefa Srefa, that the Levena is made by a fire which is even higher than atzilis. So maybe, according to the Yerushalmi and the Medrash, you're going from Bitla Yesh to Bitl Atzmi of Atzilis only. And according to the Yenis of Benazil, you're going to Bitl Atzmi, which is even higher than Atzilis. And because you're going to Bitl Atzmi, which is even higher than Atzilis, the Bitla Yesh and the Bitl Atzmi become one and the same thing. But I'm, I'm talking a lot with little source, and it's, it's bad, it's wrong. The bottom line is, the basic thinking of the Rebbe we know 
that Livna Sasapir is Yesh and Bitla Yesh, Aved and Golos and Tshuva. Etzam Hashemayim Oteir is the Bitl Atman, which is the graduation and the culmination and the transcendence of the Aved and Golos and the Tshuva and Golos v'chuli v'chuli v'chuli. The Nafkamin is how connected the Livna Sasapir to Etzam Hashemayim Oteir is, according to the Medesh and the Rishamayim, they're more separate, and according to the Yen and the Zeal, they're closer together. But the bottom line is Lakula Alma. You start off with Aveda Bittal Ayesh and you graduate to Aveda Bittal B'Metzias. And the Rebbe finishes with the true idea of Bittal Atzmi, which is the sky being clear and transparent is going to be Mashiach. Asad Lav, because then it's going to be Bittal Derech Menucha, even more than Meishlein, May in time the Shleim after was Shalom. But it was Gula Shesh Acharei Agolos, which is the idea it's not a Gula Shleim. Mashiach, and Asad Lav is Gula Shein Acharei Agolos, which is proof that it's a gula hamitis vashlema, and therefore the true idea of menucha and sholem is lost at love. So the true idea of evin sapit as opposed to levin nasa sapit is then. Question yeah. calls for the pasuk says in the way of kol agoyim. All the goyim are coming to Hakadosh Baruch Hu. This is a beater. So then kula amalei pligid is going to be the chesed meshbaim lotei and the highest madregis. Am nam, however, kivin shakol agiluim to the In as much as all the giluim of the yosid boyim with avedet achra, depending on what we do now. Even the work we do now before Mashiach must have a touch, must have a feel of rest, which represents Bittal Atzmi and the highest Madrigas of Bittal Atzmi. Our living and serving Hashem in a serene way sets up the Menuch, what Hashem is going to give up the Yasid Lavi. I did Mashiach said, Can you take it from Yad Mamish? Because of Mamish, take it from Yad Mamish. So the Yasid Lavi will be the real live Evans happy. And now there is only a paroja, a similar idea to Evan Zabi. So the Rebbe is answering all of his questions. Not directly, but indirectly. That you go from Levena to Evan, from Livnes Asapa, Chetzem, Hashemayim, Lateir. The question is only how connected the Levena is to the Evan, according to the Yenus of Marzil, more, according to the Medrash and the Yerushalmi, less. But everybody understands that there's Evan Sapi, which Hashem made, and Livnes Sapi, which we create. And it's also Deim Alirikim. And the Yosut Lavi will have the real union of Evan Sapi, of Menuch. Now, the question that he asked about Evan the Liyuma, that Bava being a worse ghost, and Mitzrayim, Lachoyd, this question that Evan didn't answer. So I'm going to stop. I'm going to pray to God that I hopefully, I had a, an acquaintance who could have been my father. His name was Harav Shmuel Levi Yitzchak ben Harav Levi Yitzchak Vodowski Olav Hashem. He's gone more than 20 years. And he told me that his life is a series of journeys. Basically, he started off in Reb Chaim Berlin, then he became a Kloizen Mega Chosset, then he became close to the Skalene Reb, and then he became a Lubavitcher. But he took from each group what they had to give. He didn't go away from each group, he collected. So he told me that the Kloizen Mega had to go to Abris to be a Sandik. And he was the designated driver. So the Kloizenbeck climbs into the back seat of the car and he says, Dib is the manig. He says to Rabbi Daski, you're the manig, you're the driver. So of course, manig means a driver. Manig also means a leader. I heard myself say, I can't lead, but I won't mislead. So the Kloizenbeck never got very excited. And he said, If you don't mislead, you're already a great leader. I just pray that I haven't misled. Okay, a good night. 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 A good night.